I'm CK. Tonight we're doing another Geek Fun kit. I'm going to try and do all of them that I can find because I find I like the Geek Fun products. This looks like a very beginner kit. It's a couple of little ladybugs in a little plastic box. So we'll see how easy it is to put together and whether it's worthwhile for a first kit for a very young builder. Hope you enjoy the video. Let's see what's in this little box. It's got a little piece of tape. Keeping it closed. Little plastic latch. Kick fun, thank you. Service at kickfun.com. Give you a Geek Fun kit, you can make magic happen. Choice of a global million Arduino fans. Even though, again, I don't think this... They say Arduino a lot, but usually these are standalone, so I'm not too worried about that. So let's see, a little bag of stuff. Two little bags of stuff, because there are two uh, ladybugs in here. We'll go into the bag in a second. A whole bunch of resistors. That's a lot of resistors for a little kit. And here's the little ladybug circuit board. Let's take a look at the circuit board. It doesn't have any values on it. It does have indication for uh, polarity for the electrolytic caps and the battery box. Two of those. And then a little piece of paper. Geek Fun is usually good about their instructions. And they do a great job of putting lots of pictures. You need a 30 watt soldering iron or better, multimeter, uh, wire cutters, tweezers, and always meter resistor values before soldering. Uh, I guess they're a little worried about their. Uh, quality control on the resistors they buy. Okay, so we're going to be a little fun. Nice little component list. And on the back, good, a nice little schematic showing you how it all works. A couple of three transistors. Some capacitors to blink the capacitor resistor circuits to blink the lights. So it looks like it'll be kind of fun. Welding resistance welding. 5.1K resistance on the left and 22 uh, ohm resistance on the right. No wrong welding. Not sure what no wrong welding means, uh, but. Let's look in the bag just to see what the specific components for each one. I'll put the other bag to the sides and the other circuit board to the side so I don't confuse myself. Very simple. Except for this. This is a little power switch. And that's tiny. That'll be a challenge for a youngster. You may want to help with that. Battery box. I assume that takes 2032s. I don't know if it takes one or two. I'm going to try one and we'll see. Big caps for this. 47 microfarad. And then a couple of transistors. Or, as the instruction sheet says, welding the triode. No, no, no. This is a transistor. This is a triode. A double triode, in fact. Uh, they do kind of the same thing, but we may want to call them transistors in the 21st century. So I'm going to get the soldering iron heated up and we'll get this thing put together. I don't think it's going to take all that long. First thing we're going to do is we're going to solder the LEDs in place. Now, the only problem is, hmm. The circuit board is not marked for 
polarity, the picture is marked for polarity, uh, which is never great. Uh, so the positive legs go there, the cathode legs go there. So put them all in. Little yellow ladybug eyes, I guess. Ladybugs have little yellow eyes. I don't know. I don't think I've ever been... I don't think I've ever noticed eyes on a ladybug. And it looks like they give us a spare yellow and a spare red LED, which is always nice. For one thing, if it's a young builder, it gives them their first batch of spare parts to keep in their spare parts box to get started. Having spare LEDs is always fun. I'll go ahead and solder these down. Now they do want us to make little antennae, so we've got to keep two of the LED leads to make antennae with later. I'll put them back in the bin. So we want 22 ohm on the right. And 5.1 on the left, even though, as the instructions say, uh, there is no wrong welding, because I think this is just controlling the rate of flashing. So I don't think it matters too much. So I'm going to, obviously these have to be joined uh, to create uh, actual circuit. So I'm going to hold the ends, move this aside for a second, hold the ends together with some locking tweezers. And you'll notice I did not take the other ends out of the uh, paper yet. Okay, we've got our legs established now, so I'm going to pull the other tape off with trying not to accidentally bust apart the legs I just soldered together. And they go on through the top, and I could try and make this all fancy and get them lined up just perfectly, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to be that fastidious about that. Just going to stick them through, bend them over, once again use the locking pliers, or tweezers, not pliers, locking tweezers to hold the leads through, and I'll zap these on. I'll probably play back this in fast motion. Uh, one thing I do want to say is the uh, quality of the circuit board is pretty good. Through hole plated, which is nice, and the solder adheres very well. Uh, use the cut LED pins to make the tentacles. Tentacles, antenna I mean. If you see a ladybug with tentacles, I would stay away from that ladybug. Okay, now we're going to weld, I'm sorry, we're going to solder the uh, battery box, the patch switch, and the patch power socket. 
So this is the thing I was saying. This oh I get it. This lays down oh huh. This is like a services mount part. That's pretty crazy. Wow. You're really gonna have to I mean it sets down there, but the leads are tiny. And it is very surface mounty. You're gonna have to this this will be hard for a youngster to do. If you are working with a youngster on this, you may wanna do this switch for them because it takes a lot of I mean, there's some precision here. It's not as bad as a true surface mount part, but it's close. Oops, and I knocked one of my antenna loose. And of course, I'm going to hold it with my finger while I get it back in place, which means I'm going to burn my finger. But I do that all the time. Ow! Okay, now we're going to put the battery box in. And that is polarity sensitive. And this is the positive side. There's a little plus sign there. So I'm just going to slap it on there. Now one thing you may want to do for these, just show your youngster, take a little bit of solder and put it on this pad. A little pool of solder like that. And take your battery box and again check the polarity. Set it down there like so and just heat that little solder you've just put on there. It'll flow and safe as houses it's on. Uh, don't wet both ends because then it'll rock. But you can do one and then just finish off the other one like that. Now we're gonna put the triodes or as we would say, transistors. With the flat spot on the transistor facing the flat spot on the silk screening. Now we'll do the electrolytics. Look like that. Oh, there's another transistor. I'm sorry. There are three transistors on the board. That would have been unfortunate. Now we'll do the three electrolytics. And again, long leg positive. Ah, the template for these is not perfect. They don't go perfectly flat because the silk screen template, I mean the through hole template is a little broader than it should be. Doesn't affect it operationally, it just means that they don't sit flat on the board. All right, I'm going to go find a 2032. I'm not sure if it takes one or two at this point. I think it just takes one, but and I don't know which direction on this switch is off and which is on. So we'll see. But one thing I am not seeing is I am not seeing... I'm actually not seeing how this works. Because the battery box doesn't seem to have an upright to get to the positive side. So maybe if I... I'm being creative here now. I'm bending these leads up, these contacts up, 
sort of hit the edge of the battery and pick up the positive side while this is picking up the base, the negative side. So we'll see if that helps. There we go. It does help, in fact. Ah. There we go. Got a little ladybug. Which is not flashing. Why are you not flashing, little ladybug? So it lights up, and we can bend the legs down a little bit. But again, it should be flashing, because if you just wanted it to go on, you certainly you wouldn't need the transistors or the capacitors. You just need the resistors to put some load on the. LED circuit. I wonder why it's not doing anything. All the caps are in the right way. Transistors are all in the right way. Nope, I don't know why it's not flashing. I mean, it's a simple enough circuit. There's nothing that can go wrong here. Uh, but, so that's it. Quick little kit. If you get this for a youngster, it does end up with at least a little light up ladybug. Uh, it's a decent first kit, except for this switch. It's not the easiest switch to put in, and if you've never, if this is a nine or ten year old's first kit, they will mess that up. Don't let them. Do it for them so they don't, their first uh, experience is not a bad one. So that's a little geek fun. Ladybug. Hope you enjoyed the video.